Welcome to today's current events class. I am Sabbath Rachel Lafleur, and today I have some of our younger students from Great Tomorrow's Elementary School. I have uh, some of our fifth graders who are graduating this year, going to middle school in uh, September of this year. And then I have one of our youngest, from my mm -hmm. younger grades, I have a third grader. And I want to introduce everyone who is seated before you today. So I have Anna Lafleur, Anna wave a little hand. And then I have Jedediah Farr, Jedediah, how are you? Mm -hmm. Wave your hand. Then I have Zarek Rope, David Solomon, wave your hand. And then Glory Lafleur, Glory, how are you? And Hi. then I have Brahima Traore. Brahima, wave your hand so they'll know who you are. Okay, so these are the students that will be sharing with me today. Um, and I wanted you all to meet some of our younger students as, um, you know, we usually have a current events class with the middle school and the high school students and they are absolutely great. Um, but our elementary school students are just as great and I wanted you to see some of them today. So I want to start off by saying that it's great to see you all. Um, I, I need to say as well that the fourth and fifth grade is actually my class. So um, these are my students with the exception of Jedediah Far, who are seated before you today. These are um, some of my fifth graders. And as I stated earlier, they are graduating. Um, of course, we're not going to have a graduation ceremony as we normally do because of the coronavirus. But nonetheless, they are graduating. They all have great grades. Thank God. And um, I want to start off by asking you all, how is everyone doing? So one by one, I want to tell you, I want you to share with us your experience as we've been home now for the past month and a half, about six weeks now, um, and school is not going to open up as um as Governor Cuomo has stated, um, this school year, of course, we have our own thing going aside, but we'll talk about that later. Um, I want to ask you all about your experience. So let's start off with our third grader, Jeremiah, or should I say Shadrach Fart. Um, Jeremiah, how has your, I'm sorry, Jedediah, excuse me, I'm sorry. How has your experience been for the past six weeks? Well, I'm good, but it's kind of hard for, for me to not be downstairs with my friends and, and my cousins going to school. And the house is not, it's not bad, but I would rather be downstairs in school doing work. You would actually rather be doing work in school? Yes. Now, you know it's got to be that bad. If Jedediah says he'd rather be downstairs doing work in school, then it has got to be really something. Let's go over to David Solomon. Uh, Zarek, um, tell me about your experience in these past six weeks. It's fine, but honestly, I'm happy that we're home. Why but are you happy that it'll you're be home? better to be in because... I live here in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. we, we wake up every morning very early, but it's good to have free time, but it's too much. We've been staying here for like a lot of time. We're not allowed to go out and all that. And the bill is evil, driving everybody crazy. So, <laughs> um. Okay, so Nabil and Ziva, for the audience, um, if you don't know, those are his younger siblings, right? Um, so what I hear you say, Zavika, is you've about had enough <laughs> about having your siblings around you. Um, let's continue to move on. Glory, tell me your experience. Well, it's been fine, but my siblings are annoying. Stop. It's really hard. It's really hard. Okay. Brahima, what about you? It's pretty fun because I'm here with my cousin playing with the iPad every day. And sometimes we do hide and seek, but I still miss the school. Okay. And Honor, what's your experience? It's pretty it's pretty good, but being at home with all with all my sisters. Or every single day is kind of boring. I would rather be at school with my friends and do work. Okay. But now, 
<laughs> what I find interesting, those of you who have siblings with you in your homes these past six weeks, um, I've heard you all state just about that your siblings pretty much they're getting on your nerves as you are home with them these past six weeks. Is that what I'm hearing from yes. all of you, most of you? Yes. <laughs> so um, you all have stated that you miss school, and I totally understand that. All of you are doing online schooling, as all of the students in Great Tomorrow's Elementary, Middle School, and Outlaw High School. Um, tell me about that experience of doing online school, how it has been for you. Um, let's start off with Glory. How has that been for you? Well, it's been... Um... It's like, I really don't. Are you, do you, is it easy for you? Are you having a hard time with it? Do you like it? Well, it's been fine, but it's like I have to go to, um, I have to go to, If I have to go to another day to get what I want, I have to switch back and forth. And it's been challenging. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jedediah, what about you? How has it been for you doing online schoolwork? Well, it's fine, but it's kind of hard because, like, the work that I have in school is not that hard. You just have to write it down on paper. But the online work here is harder, and you have to be, you have to be like focused to do it all like like in one day. Okay, and Zarek, I enjoy it, but I'm still not used to doing online school because, first of all, I never even knew I had an email. So, all this, I don't know. Okay, and Brahima. It's pretty fine because I I do work, but it's, it's not good because I still miss the people from the school. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I totally hear what you're saying. And Honor? Well, at first, it, it has been hard for me. But now that I'm getting better at typing and stuff, it started getting easy. But it's still, it's still really tough. And... It's hard. It's hard to keep your mind focused on doing on on doing on the thing when you're at, at doing your work when you're at home, because there's so many distractions around you. And that was going to be my next question after after hearing um, Jedediah make mention of that first. That was doing online school at home. Do you find it? Um, as I just heard you state as well, Honor, do you find it harder to keep yourself focused because you're home or is it easier for some of you? Is, that, is it harder for you to focus on your schoolwork at home or is it easier? It's harder for me because Nabil and Ziva, they're always jumping on me, doing this, doing that. They have the television and all that. Every time I'm doing work, Sometimes I try and go to my bed, but no balance here, but they follow me everywhere. <laughs> okay. And Brahima, okay, thank you. <laughs> but it's easier for you? Yeah, because I, I go upstairs and then I do the work. Okay, all right. And what about you, um, Glory? Is it easier for you to focus or is it harder? It's easy for me because I could just sense. Okay, I have, I have headphones, like I found it, so I could just listen to music. Okay, but um, obviously you all would prefer to be in school than doing online work, right? Of course. So let me ask you all another question. Um, because we, we are obviously home because of the coronavirus, and as of late, they have stated that it's going to get worse, right? It's going to get a lot worse um, by August of, of this year, right? That more people are going to die, more people are going to be infected with the coronavirus. So we are having to stay home as a result of the spread of the coronavirus, at least 
practicing social distancing, which is what they've been telling us to do. Um, did you think that it was going to be this bad when you first heard about the coronavirus? Did you think it was going to be as bad as it is right now, Jedediah? No. Well, I didn't think it was going to be this bad. But now that it's spreading all around, it's kind of it's kind of really scary because if you go outside, you could you could catch it and if you come you could you you come back inside your house and then you and then that's how you spread it inside your house. Um, Brahima, you were going to say something? Yes. Did you think it was going to be this bad? You did. No, I didn't. Because because before they just they were just talking about it, and then when it kept going on, they just closed the school and everything. Right. Anna, did you think it was going to be this bad? I didn't think it was going to be this bad. I th I thought that at least we would be able to go outside and go to church. But I thought the only thing that we wouldn't be able to do is go to school. But Okay. Uh, and Glory, what did you think? I never really thought about it, but I actually didn't think it would be this bad. So it's kind of surprising okay and um zarek uh david solomon what do you think did you think it was going to be this bad as it is now not this bad because everything's closed and now that we're doing online school the government's giving out free tablets and computers and all that but like yeah it's really it really is bad and what do you think about the fact that, well, now things are reopening um, in many states. Many states are starting to reopen um, their businesses and so forth. But, you know, for a few weeks or so, um, most of everything was closed down. Um, but let me ask you this question, because obviously um, you all have to eat. And so your parents have had to go out and uh, purchase the foods and so forth. Have any of you been outside of your house? In the past no. six weeks, have you actually been outside? No. David Solomon, have you been outside? I have been outside, but I didn't go outside. Some t most of the times I play in my backyard, stuff okay. like that. But, but we don't stay out too long. Okay. Um, Brahima, have you been outside at all in the past six weeks? I mean, I only go outside when my aunt brings stuff for the house. Um that we can eat. I only go to help her and um, bring it up, bring it up um, upstairs. Okay. And Jedediah, have you been out at all in the past six weeks? No. Okay. And what about you, Honor? I've only been out once, which was on Saturday to go to church. Okay. And Glory, have you been out? Yes, I went outside because like, Papa was just taking us out to, like, go outside once in a while so that, like, we don't have to stay home. And, yeah. But that was only once. Okay. And are you all prepared when the time comes to go outside? Do you all have masks? Are you all, um, do you think that you are prepared to go outside? When it, when the time comes? No. You don't think you are? No. Are you ready to go outside? I'm sure you are. You're not ready to go out, um, Zarek? Brahima, you're not ready to go out either? Now that's very interesting because I just assume that you all will say the opposite. Tell me why you're not ready to go out. Zarek, tell me why you're not ready to go outside. Because... I did ask my mom once what, when we were going to go outside and should we prepare. But she said that we're not going to go outside anytime soon. So that's okay. Right. And Brahima, you said you're not ready to go outside. Why? Because I can just go outside and catch the corona and, and then I'm around a lot of people and I could just touch them or, or just get them the corona and then it's going to be bad. 
Okay. All right. Um, Jedediah, are you ready to go outside? I'm not ready to go outside because because if I if I go outside, I could catch the coronavirus, and then if, when I come outside, it will, it will spread it will spread all around the house. And if I and if I like if I go to a restaurant or something, it could be even worse. Okay, so what I'm hearing you all saying is that despite the fact that they are reopening businesses in many of the states, um, you are not ready to go um, out and to venture into these businesses. You know, they are opening up restaurants, they're opening up bowling alleys, they're opening up barbershops, they're opening up many of these businesses, and you know the people are going to be running to go into these businesses. So what I'm hearing from you all is that um, because you don't want to catch the coronavirus and that's that's a, a great way of thinking, um, you're not ready to go out now because you don't want to get it. So you're not going to be running to these places where they're open businesses. So let, let me ask you all this question. What do you think about people who are running out to these businesses now to go do those things? What do you they think about them? I think they all already caught the coronavirus. You think Either they already have it? Or, or really sick. Okay. And Jedediah, what do you think about the people who are running to these businesses now that they are reopening? Do you think that it's good for them to do that or it's not? It's not good for them. It's not good for them to do that because it's crazy because I don't know why they will, why they will try to run in the barbershops and the restaurants to just catch the coronavirus or spread it. Yeah, me, me either. Glory, what do you think? I think that is too soon because right now, the coronavirus is like in its hundreds. Like, and like if you reopen the business, I think you'll be more, it will just grow and grow. So, it's like more people catch it, so I think it's too soon. Yes, I certainly would agree with you that it is too soon. Um, okay, before we end today's current events class, um, I want to ask you a one question. If you all could say something to the people out there regarding the coronavirus and the state that we're in right now, what would you tell them? What would you tell them, um, Zarek? What would you tell people? I would tell them to stay home. Okay. What would you tell them, Brahima? I would tell them to stay inside and never go outside. Okay. Jedediah, what would you tell them? I would tell them to stay home and pray. Stay home and pray. Anna, what would you tell them? I would tell them to stay home also because I don't think I don't think that is good for them to open the businesses when the coronavirus is getting worse. Okay. I don't understand that. And Glory, what would you tell them? I would tell them to stay home so that because if you don't stay home, you'll put people's lives in danger. So I'll just say stay home. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you so much for joining today's class um it's really been a blessing to be with um to speak with you all today and um it's good to see you all um as i actually because i am your teacher we actually meet um a few times in a week as we do our video classroom um, teachings but it's wonderful to hear from you all so i thank you all for sharing with me i i do want to say before we end that pastor manning and elder lafleur are working on a way to get the students back into the school at least by the summertime to do some fun things um, and creative things as well. So um, listen out for that. Your parents will be made aware of that. And I just want to say to you all, continue to stay safe, stay home. As you all have stated, you all have enough wisdom at uh, eight, nine, and 10 years old to know that this is not the time to be going outside. And you're absolutely right. Stay home, be safe. And as uh, Jedediah Shadrach mentioned, pray and continue to follow the Honorable James David Manning as the Lord is speaking to him and he is speaking to us. So thank you all for sharing with me today. Um, and I just want to say peace out. Peace out, everyone. Peace. peace.
Peace. Peace. everyone to today's current events class we are giving you a double whammy today as i have just met with some of our elementary school students from great tomorrows i now have seated before you some of our middle school students and they are going to share with us as well today so i want to introduce everyone to you before we start and uh here we have charles adams who is a eighth grader graduating from great tomorrow's middle school this year i have I have G2 Abate, who is a seventh grader. I have Twain McIntosh, who is also a seventh grader. I have Amir Cabre, who is a sixth grader. And then I have Mariah James, who is also a seventh grader in our middle school. How is everyone doing today? Great. Good. 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 Okay, excellent. Um, so before we get started, or as we get started, um, I want to ask you all a couple of questions. And again, I just met with some of the elementary school students from Great Tomorrows, and I they shared with us some of the experiences and some of the things that they thought about the coronavirus as far as you know, um, observing people and what they're feeling personally. And I want to ask you all as we get started, it's been now six weeks that we've been out of school, um, soon to be two months shortly. And I wanted to ask you all um, in that time frame how you have been coping with being indoors with the coronavirus in general and so forth. So Charles, let's start off with you. How have you been? I have been good, but I'm missing school a lot because I'm not used to being home this much. Okay. And how have you been handling being at home? What have you been doing? I've just been doing my schoolwork, playing, working out. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about you, G2? Um, I've been doing fine. Like, I just got, like, some schoolwork done. I just do house chores or help my mom around the house if I need to. You know, I pretty much miss all my friends, surprisingly, but yeah, this is what happens, you know? And Twain, how have you been these past six weeks? I've been great doing my schoolwork, working out, playing, and I've been missing school a lot. Okay. And Amir? I've been doing I've been doing some math and history and taking naps. I'm okay, taking naps, all right. And Mariah? Well, I've, I've been good. Actually, I really like quarantine because I don't really like to go outside and stuff. So um, you actually like quarantine? Yeah, I want to stay like this forever. <laughs> so you would rather not go out at all? Yes. Really? Now that's very really? interesting. That is because very interesting. Computers and phones, so it's fine. Let me ask you all this question. Um, again, as I spoke to the elementary school students, um, many of them have siblings. They live. They are at home with their siblings. And um, what I thought was interesting was, um, you know, not just being tired of being at home, but tired of being around their siblings. Um, those of you who have siblings, do you all feel that way as well? I'm just curious. Um, um, do you think? Like, my sister's an essential worker. She has a part-time job, like, at a supermarket, so, like, I barely see her. But, like, when she do come, we just, like, hang out and do TikToks together. So, like, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing. Like, I think this is a great time to bond with your siblings and your family members. So, yeah, it's not, like, that bad. 
That's interesting um, because it is a great time to bond if, if that's what people are going to do. So because I have two brothers here um, sharing with us today, um, I want to ask them that same question. But Amir, let me get to you really quick. Um, you have a sibling living at home with you. How has it been? Um, it's been rough because we always fight. Um, but right now, he's calmed down. He's painting. Okay. All right. Now, let me get to the two brothers, uh, Charles and Twain. How has it been, the both of you being home together? It has been terrible. <laughs> it's been a lot of fighting, and we don't <laughs> really get along much. So it's... It's not really fun, but me and Johnny now, we're really close, so I don't really have a problem with him. Ah, and so Charles, you are older than Twain, right? We want to let everyone know that you are older than Twain, and as the older sibling, um, you said it hasn't been really fun for you. But as a younger sibling, Twain, what would you say? Um, um, it's been fun because Charles is really funny and <laughs> when he gets mad with me, I just laugh it out because he's just funny and Johnny, yeah, Johnny, he's, he, he, he's great. He's funny. Now, you know, I always find that interesting that the older sibling would usually say that uh, the younger siblings are annoying and that, um, you know, they get on their nerves and so forth. Um, and to hear it from the perspective of the youngest sibling, oh, no, uh, it's been fun, you know, when he gets mad at me. So it's very interesting. But, Charles, I will say you are not the only older sibling that has ever said that about their younger sibling. Most older siblings will tell you that the younger siblings are annoying as echoed by some of the elementary school students that I spoke to earlier, okay? So let's move on, all right? Um, many states are reopening as we are in the midst of the coronaviruses. Um, you all know that a lot of businesses have been closed. People have filed for unemployment um, in the hundreds of thousands. And so um, as we are looking at states now reopening businesses such as barber, um, barber parlors and beauty salons and bowling places and so forth, do you think that it's too soon to reopen? Or do you think that now is the time to open up these businesses and people should go and venture out? What do you think, Right, Let's start with you. I think it's too soon to open because like the coronavirus just started and there's still people out there that are sick and that are still dying. Okay. And I mean, what do you think? Do you think it's too soon to reopen or this is a good time to start? I think it's too soon because it's just going to cause chaos and it's going to be even worse. Okay. And, um, go ahead. We depend on the small businesses and I think a lot of people will go out because they haven't been going out in a long time. So, yeah, I think it will be worse. And uh, G2, what do you think? Um... I actually went out recently and like I went downtown to deliver something with my mom and like there was a lot of people but some weren't doing like some didn't have face masks and some didn't weren't doing long distance so it was weird out there but there was less people outside which was a good thing so yeah what do you think? Do you think it's too recent, uh, too soon to reopen these businesses or what? I think it's a bit risky because I'm um, like the virus might spread more because we don't really know who have it and who don't. And most of these people really need money, so they would just open back their shop and don't really care about anyone else. And uh, Twain, what do you think? I think it's um, they shouldn't open back because this coronavirus it does come to kill all of us. So 
Like, if you go um, go somewhere, like, someone want to shake it, you don't know if they have the COVID-19 or not. You know, it, it's very interesting that I hear from you all, as I heard from the elementary school students, for young people um, to say that it's too soon to reopen the businesses and that people shouldn't be so quick to venture out. When we see adults who are actually going now, um, this weekend, the, we the weather was absolutely beautiful on Sunday. Um, and I forget whether it was Sunday afternoon or Monday afternoon where they showed uh, what looked like a good amount of people sitting in Central Park because the weather was just so beautiful. And most of the people that were sitting there in the picture did not have masks on and they were having picnics and they were just sitting on the grass and just enjoying themselves in the warm afternoon of spring. But as I'm listening to you all talk about, you think it's too soon. Um, what I'm hearing from you all is that though people are doing that, you are not going to be so quick to venture out. How do you think that we can convince people, or maybe maybe not convince is not the right word to use. What do you think we you would tell people about going out at this time? Because you know, you people have been home just like you all have been home, and they seem to have had enough of it. You know, people are saying people have cabin fever, which means staying indoors every day, all day, and drive a person mad. And so they have to get outside. What would you say to these people to try to convey to them that this is very serious? This is not the time to be going out and having fun. What would you tell people, Charles? I would tell people that they should just stay inside, like, because it's more safer. They shouldn't really go outside because we don't really know who have it. So they can just catch it instantly. So... It would be better for them to just stay inside and probably stay away from people inside of the house so that they don't really get crazy. Okay. And Amir, what would you tell people? I think we should also stay inside because it's just going to cause more mayhem and more people are going to be sick. And there's really nothing we could do about it because there won't be social distancing. Yeah. Um, Mariah? Well, I would tell people that millions of people are dying every every single day. And you want to go outside, you're just going to be one of those million people dying. So if you want to die, then you go outside. Okay. And Sheba? Um, I mean, if people um, say, like, I don't think people take it very seriously especially like us kids because we think since we're like younger we'll have a lower risk but there are people there are kids and teenagers who have died from it already so i think more children should take it seriously and they should also um take it seriously by saying if we catch it we could give it to our family members so yeah we need to find a way to, to show like kids that this is a very serious matter yeah, you know, um, you sparked something as, as I was listening to you speak, and that was the fact that people are, you know, going out and some of you said, um, you know, they're not wearing masks. And we just talked about Central Park. Most of those people were not wearing masks. Um, a few were wearing some masks. But what do you think about people when they venture out during this time and they are not taking the extra precaution of protecting themselves? Um, do you think that it's selfish on their part, or do you think that it's okay? I think it's selfish on their part because you're going to be harming people around you. What if you have the virus and you don't even know, and then out of the blue you just start coughing, then you cough for somebody, then that person automatically has the virus. And, it, and the virus it sits in the air. So now anybody that walks past would get the virus. Charles, what do you think? I agree with Mariah because even if they do catch it, they might they might not know it until a certain time. So they could probably be corrupting other people around them. And Twain, what do you think? What do you think about that? Even your family, like 
you don't even know who will have it or who does not have it. Yeah, you know, that's the thing about the coronavirus is that you don't know who has it and who does not have it. So in that sense, because all of you have um, sang that in unity, that you don't know who has it and who does not have it, does it make you take extra precaution on your part when you do venture out? Um, will, will you take extra precaution as far as trying to protect yourselves and your loved ones? Sheba? Yes, because when you go out, you should always wear a glove and a mask. Mask, And since it's a little bit hot right now, I think a lot of people, they just take off their mask now because they're trying to breathe. And I go through that too every time I put on a mask and go outside. But I think people should like, even if it's hot, um, it's worth the risk for being caught because... Because everyone's safe if you put on a mask, mask, and if you're doing long distance too. I mean, have um, have you taken, or are you going to be taking extra precautions when you do venture out? Yes, I'll be wearing gloves, and I'll I'll stay like six feet, around six feet from other people. You know, walk on walk paths where there's not a lot of people. Do you think that we will ever get back to the mindset we had prior to the coronavirus as far as do you think that we as human beings, well, maybe I shouldn't say human beings, maybe I should say, um, you know, certain people specifically, will there, do you think the time will come where you'll just forget about the coronavirus when it does eventually end? Or will you always have in that mindset of uh, taking extra precautions, watching the people around you? Um, um, you know, I've heard people say that they will never shake hands again because of the coronavirus and they won't do other things again. Do you think this has changed how your interactions with people, period, for is it temporary or do you think that this is a long lasting effect on you? Um, Mariah, let's start with you. Um, I think that for some people, for most people, it would be temporary. But for me, I feel like it'll take a while for me to like soften up to having physical contact with other people. Okay. And Charles, what do you think? Well, well, I would. Um, I will always wear my mask. I think it'll be temporary for me, but for most people out there, you have certain type of people who will never do this type of stuff again, like interact with other people. And when you say interact, you mean interact on a, in a close physical way, right? Yes. Okay. And Twain, what do you think? Is this going to change you temporarily or for the long haul? Are you just going to change the way you interact with people? I will still wear my mask, man, because I, I'm not going to trust them like that because they, they can have a virus, although the coronavirus stopped, but I will never trust someone again. I will never now, as we're talking about the coronavirus, uh, they are stating that um, well up until August of this year, which is the summertime, that hundreds of thousands of more people, um, more people are going to die as a result of the coronavirus. My question to you is, what do you say to the people who think that this is a hoax, that this is not real? Um, there are some people who believe that the numbers that they are giving us is false, that it's not true, that certainly all of these people have not died because of coronavirus. All of these people have not been infected with the coronavirus. What do you say to people who say that, you know, this is not real, this is a joke, and that the media and that the, the left is just blowing this out of proportions and they're trying to get rid of tribulation Trump. That's why they are making up these numbers. What do you say to those people, Sheba? Um, I would just say that, you know, it's kind of dumb and stupid, but I don't really look into it because I right now we should be worrying about the pandemic because I don't really think this is time for politics, you know what I'm saying? 
Yes. So I think people should worry about the people more than all this other business. That's, a, that's very interesting um, that you make that statement that people are more concerned about the politics rather than the individuals, because that's absolutely, yeah, absolutely dead spot on that. Amir, what do you think? I think that the people won't realize until they start getting it and all the people around them will start getting it. And I also think they need to start watching Pastor Manning and reading the Bible. And you say that they should start watching Pastor Manning. Why? Because this is all about the, this is all the tribulation. It is. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that, um, that this is the tribulation. Um, and I can't help but go back and think about, you know, the period of the time when Noah was on the earth and he tried to warn people then about the flood. They didn't pay any attention to him. Um, of course, you know, it's human nature. It's human nature to disregard things and to not pay attention. But I think ultimately, um, Amir, as you brought this up in the spiritual aspect, is that um, people can't hear. And that's because God has not allowed some people to hear, which is why we are seeing all of these deaths and so forth. Um, and so we're going to continue to see people die. But let me ask you all this question as far as your families and your loved ones. Have, has your family members changed the way that they do things um, as a result of the coronavirus? Charles? Well, yes. My aunt, like, she goes to work in New York. So, like, when she comes back, she would just take off her shoes, go straight to her room, and go and shower. And she don't speak to anyone because she has the mask on. So she's trying to protect us and herself. Okay. So you said now when she goes to New York, um, you and... Um Twain, you both live in Connecticut, right? I just yes. spoke to a, a student in our elementary school who also lives in Connecticut. Let me ask you all a specific question. Um, I spoke to Zarek, who also lives in Connecticut with his family. And he said to me, you know, um, if I do go out once in a while, I go out into my backyard. Um, and even with that, I don't go out that often. For the two of you living in Connecticut, um, Obviously, you're not in an area where you see a lot of people. Is it easier for you to just go out um, outside of your house and just go out and play and hang out? Yes, it yes, is. Ma yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. And for those of us who actually live in the city, reside within New York City, um, has, uh, let me start with Amir. Amir, have you been out at all? Um, yeah. And we, how was your experience mom, going out? Um, there's not a lot of people. Sometimes we see like one to two people every time we walk outside. And are those people wearing masks? Do you see people wearing masks or they're just walking around freely? Yeah, they wear masks. Okay. All right. Mariah, what about you? Where you live? Well, no, I haven't gone outside at all. Okay. All right. So, yeah, you're the one who loves, you're the, the stay at home queen. You like staying at home. Yeah. Okay. Now, has your mom had to go out to work or has she been home with you? No, my mother, she goes to work like all the time. But when she she's comes an essential home, worker, right? Yeah. Yes. So when she comes home, she she automatically goes to the bathroom and then Manji Bowman right after her just sprays bleach all over the place. And then she goes, washes her hands, then takes a shower, then puts her clothes in the washer. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, um, as I'm listening to you and also Charles, who have people in their homes who have to go out and work on a daily basis, when they come back home, um, they go straight into the shower. They do a whole nother kind of thing than what they would normally do um, if it wasn't co the coronavirus. Right. Because now people are taking extra precautions and so forth. And so it's, it's very interesting, again, as we. Um, 
are living in this period, how much we have had to change. Let me ask you all this question. When the time does come and the coronavirus ends, because eventually it's going to end, we don't know when, only God knows when it's going to end, but when it does end eventually, right? Um, and I have to add, because Pastor Manning states all the time that when it does end, the worst is coming. This is not the worst. As bad as this is, this is not the worst of it. There are things that are going to be coming that are far worse than what we're dealing with at, at this present time. Mm-hmm. Well, my question to you is, when it does all die down at some point, do you think that you could ever go back to a movie theater again? Or ever go back to sit down in a restaurant again and enjoy dinner? Do you think that you can ever experience that again the way you used to, Sheila? Um, I think like people would be scared because they might think that, oh, it's not mm-hmm. over yet. So I feel like after the coronavirus is over, it'll take like probably a year till people like mentally get back on their feet. Okay. And Charles, what do you think? I think like I would have to wait until like a couple months until I go outside. But some people that have been inside and is not really used to it would probably just go out without thinking. Okay. And I mean, what about you? Would you ever be able to enjoy sitting in a movie theater again or whatever you used to do that you really enjoyed outside again? No, I think it would probably take a while before I go outside again. Okay. Like, before I do normally. And Twain, what about you? No, I don't want to um, go out that lot. So it will take like a month or more before I start to go outside because I, I am very scared. Okay. All right. And you're very scared um, in regards to um, getting the coronavirus. Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. How do you see the future is my question to you. How do you see the future? Let's start with um, Mariah. I feel like humanity's future is very slim. Like, I feel like a lot of people are going to die very quickly and humanity will eventually go extinct. Okay. What about you, Sheba? Um, I feel like, I don't really know, but I feel like it's just not going to like work, you know? You said that it's not going to work? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, what do you think? Um, I think that the future is just going to forget about what happened and it will just be even worse. Like, we'll go back to what we are doing and yeah, I think we'll forget about the coronavirus and we won't take precaution. Okay. Um, Twain. Do you think that, um, what do you think about the future? Do you think about the future at all and what that means for you and what that means for the world as a whole? What do you think? I think that the future is going to change and people are going to go back and do what they used to do before the coronavirus start. Now, I I find it very interesting um, between you and Amir, you both stated the same things in, in different ways, but the fact that people are going to go back. So what you're saying is that this coronavirus really did not have an impact on humanity. Is that what you're saying? That you don't really think that it has changed people? I mean, is that what you're saying? Yeah. That is interesting. Mm-hmm. Charles, um, as you just heard your peers make that statement, do you think that this coronavirus has changed people or you think that they're just going to go right back to how things were prior to this? I think people might just go right back from the beginning and corrupt this world more and this and turn this world into one big wasteland full of evil. Wow. 
Okay, so as we're talking about the Bible, um, and I hear you all making some comments that people are going to go back and just going to be wicked again. Um, you all can understand why God is doing what he's doing, right? When we talk about the fact that um, he's killing people and people are quick to say, well, God doesn't do that. God loves everyone, but God does kill people. And we know that because we've read the Bible. Do you all understand why we have to go through the tribulation is the question. Chiba. Um, I feel like this is just like wave one of the tribulation. It's not really um, the biggest thing about it. Because after this is over, something bigger is going to come. And you're absolutely right about that. Um, so do you understand why we have to go through this is my question. I think the reason we have to go through this is because God needs to cleanse out the earth and make sure all the wicked people has gone so he could banish the devil. The devil. Okay. I mean, what do you think? I agree. And I also think it's because people are not listening to what he had, what he had assigned us to do. Okay. Um, Charles? I agree to what Amir said because most people don't really believe in God. They just like doing their own way. So, like, if the Lord speak to them through a person, they'll just, like, ignore what the person has to say. So, the Lord... So, right now, the Lord is just cleansing the earth. Um... You know, I've, I find it quite fascinating speaking to you all as young people in middle school that you all are speaking with such wisdom to know that God is cleansing the earth um, because that's exactly what he is doing. Though people will try to argue you, argue with you about that and say that's not true. God will never do anything like that. The fact that you all know that truth um, is quite uh, fascinating in this day and age. So let me ask you all this question based upon what you all have just stated. Do you all fear at all when you watch all of the death that is going on and you, Sheba, said that <laughs> things are going to be a lot worse and you're absolutely right about that. Do you all fear in any way? Sheba, let me start with you. Um... In any way, I would just, you know, think that even though this tribulation is going to come, because this is just wave one, I feel like nothing will happen to the elect or anything. But even if um, you're one of the elect, I feel like if you do something bad or anything, you're just going to, God is just going to, you know, make you, how I say, you're just going to leave the elect and you're going to go with the people that are going to be going through the tribulation. Okay, so let me just um, restate what you're stating, right? What mm -hmm. you're saying is, is that mm -hmm. if you're part of the elect, um, God will take care of you, but even if you're part of the elect and you choose to do the wrong things and disobey God and not follow his instructions, then you will be swept away as well. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, Amir. Yes. What do you think about, do you fear? Um, no, not really. Why? Because I think, I know that God is with me and that I'll make it through. Okay. Twain, what about you? I agree with what Amir said that we will make it true, man. Okay. And Malaya? Yeah, I, I agree with them because God is doing all these things to the world to um help us. And he he said it says in the Bible that he would that if we were to repent, he would stop all of this stuff. But nobody's repenting, nobody's listening. Everybody's still sinning. Okay. Charles? I actually fear a little bit, but 
once you have faith in God and listen to the word of Pastor Manning and read your Bible more, I believe God will stay with you. Amen. Um, I am so glad that we were able to um, speak today, that I was able to speak with you all. Um, again, I, I find it quite fascinating when I'm talking to you all as young people. And I know that all of this is because of how you all have been taught by the Honorable James David Manning, listening to his teachings by your teachers on a daily basis, by the school um, and what we do and so forth. And so as I'm listening to you all, there's no doubt that the hand of God is upon your lives as I listen to you all speak. And, you know, I will say, as Pastor Manning spoke, that um, stay home. Um, if you don't have to go out as he spoke uh, this morning on the Manning Report, don't go out. And though people are not taking this serious and they're, you, you're going to see hundreds and thousands of people going out, doing the regular things that they used to do, you stay home and you follow the instructions of the Honorable James David Manning. But I will say on top of that, the pastor is working to put something together for the school for the summertime um, because we have been or the young people have been indoors for the most part. Uh, it'll be going on past two months by that time. But he is working on something along with Elder LaFleur um, so we can get together in the courtyard and do some fun things there. And so, uh, you know, you'll wait for the instructions of Pastor Manning and Elder LaFleur as they contact your parents and let them know. Um, but this is not going to end anytime soon. So I would encourage you all to continue to listen to Pastor. Um, continue to stay in the word of God. Don't get caught up with what they're doing out there in the world. Don't get caught up with the world. If you see thousands of people going in one direction, you go in the opposite direction. You follow what God has in store for you. We are not part of this world. I want to remind you all about that. You are part of God's kingdom. So we are not to do the things that they do out into the world. It has been a blessing speaking to you all. Uh, I cannot wait to see you all physically in person. We've been talking through video chats for about a few weeks now. I know that you all miss one another. Um, what do you all want to say to your all of your friends that you don't see on a day-to-day -day basis? Say something quick to them. Charles, what do you want to say to everyone? I want to say keep safe and just read your Bible more and listen to Pastor Manning every day and you'll be fine. Great. Sheba, what do you want to say to all your friends? Um, I want to say um, I miss you guys and I can't wait to see you all and stay safe. Twain? I want to say, guys, to keep safe from the coronavirus and be safe. And I miss you guys so much. Amir? I want to say stay home and watch Pastor. And Mariah? I want to say that I hope you're not annoying as you were when I left. <laughs> <laughs> that's mariah <laughs> well thank you so much for sharing with me today on the coming events class um again it has been truly a blessing speaking with you all i pray all of you out there were just as blessed as i am speaking and listening to the young people and um thank you all for sharing with us peace out peace, peace. out peace, peace.